So in our last lesson, we uh, we talked about uh, uh, that was the one before it. Uh, the one before the last we talked about was going to was supposed to remember. So if if you if you agreed on something in the past and you weren't able to do it for some reason or another, you will say uh, I was supposed to do my homework, but yeah. you no, know, my cousin visited. Uh, so there goes the plan. It's not going to happen. Yeah. It, didn't, it didn't actually happen. That's the idea. But if it's more of a plan or something that you um, something that you plan to do and uh, it got cancelled, you can you can use going to. Yeah, that's the idea. Yeah. So you can say I was going to visit my grandmother, but the car didn't want to turn on. For example, there was a problem yeah. with my car. Whatever. So that was uh, the lesson before last. After that, we followed this lesson with a discussion of uh, deductions. So deductions is a, it's an interesting topic where you use modal verbs. And we have like three different levels. Uh, the ones we talked about, if you remember in the exercise, we have the very strong belief in something. And in these uh, examples, you can use a strong modal verb like must. So he must have finished his homework by now. So let's say you see your brother or your sister, someone starting homework, starting doing their homework at five o'clock. And then you maybe maybe your mother or someone asks, has he finished his homework? And now it's 10 o'clock. So you think you're to yourself, he must have finished by now. I mean, who takes five hours to do his homework, right? So he must have finished. But at the same time, you're, it's not a fact because he didn't actually go and check, right? So you cannot say he finished. You have to say, he must have finished. He, it's like saying he probably finished. It's just a little stronger than probably. They get the idea. So when you say he must have finished, he uh, have done it by now. So here you have a strong belief in what you're saying, right? And the same thing with can't, if you use it in, uh, in that way, it means you're pretty sure that something is, is not true. So if you say that can't be his car, so let's say you know that your neighbor is a pretty poor guy. Then you see him all of a sudden driving a Lamborghini. So you think to you in your, in your mind, you'll say that can't be his car. It just can't be his car, right? But yeah. you don't know for a fact. You still don't know for a fact. So if you go and ask him and, and you tell him, is that your car? And he tells you, Alexander, why not? Hello? Hi, we can hear you. Hey, you. Yeah, okay. Uh, how, how are you today? Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Uh, so here we're just having a little revision of uh, modal verbs for deduction. Uh, I was just telling Ibrahim how to use uh, must and can't if you're really sure about something. But at the same time, it's not a fact because you, you don't really know for sure. But you strongly believe. So the example I was telling you about is uh, you see your neighbor and you know your neighbor is not rich. You see him one day driving a Lamborghini. So you think to yourself that can't be his car or just can't be his car. But it's not a fact. You cannot say it isn't his car unless you ask him and you tell him, uh, is this your car? And if he tells you no, then, then yeah, it's not his car. It becomes a fact, right? But as long as you don't know for sure, you could just use can't. That can't, and then you use an infinitive. And of course, if you're not as sure and you want to convey something that's possible, you can use may, you can use could, you can use might, right? And uh, grammatically, they're all the same. Basically, you just need to use uh, an infinitive after that. That's the idea. As long as you use an infinitive, that's fine. But even with an infinitive, even though you have to use an infinitive after all modal verbs, there's the option of using uh, a verb by, uh, plus ing after that to convey something that's going on right now. Just like number one here, he could be picking up people from the station. Or if uh, maybe your mother or someone asks, what's your brother doing? You can say he could be having lunch because it's lunchtime and you remember he was hungry. So you could say, he could be having lunch. You're not definite, you're not sure. It's not a fact, of course. It's just something that's possible. So, uh, so this is the idea of uh, using modal verbs for deduction. 
So uh, we talked about that in our last lesson, and then we discussed the idea of some deductions. If you're doing them about states, um, you need to use the infinitive. But if the deduction is something about something happening right now, then you can make it into a sort of verb ing uh, form after the infinitive, of course. Uh, not an infinitive, you need to use, to be more precise, you need to use be. Um, and you need to use it as it is. He could be eating, they could be, uh, they could be watching television. Um, they might be late. Late is more of a state form. But uh, this is the idea here. Uh, state versus something happening right now. Um, after that, I think we did, uh, did we do number five? Yeah, we finished number five. We chose the right answers. We did that. Number six. Okay, we didn't do number six, I think. Okay, let's start here with number six. So we want to fill in the gaps with the correct form of these verbs. So um, all of these examples are sort of deductions. And we need to reuse the right uh, form of the verb, depending on uh, the example. So let me read number one. So number one, that can't be the right house. So maybe these are two friends looking for another friend's home address. They're looking for his house and it doesn't seem to, that they found the right house. What about number two here? Mm, no, would you like to try with number two? Okay. Uh, John is not here. Uh, she must be doing the shopping. Yeah, that's, I think that's correct. That's, that must be, he must be doing the shopping. Mm. All right, number three, Brian. Paula might, um, they do. Might know yeah, where he lives. Let's use no. I think it's the best verb we have here. Yeah. All right, so Paula might uh, know where he lives. What about number four now? You must love living in London. Okay. Okay, brain, number five. What do you think? Uh, John, uh, Josh can't work now. His office is closed. Mm, okay, there's a little sort of hint here. There are two hints, actually. You have this hint, and then you have this hint. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Brian, give, give it another try. Yeah, the verb is right, okay? Work is correct, but you didn't use the correct form. Yeah. You use the correct verb, but not the correct form. And it goes now, Ibrahim. Can't be working, uh, Safala, Josh can't be working now. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Yeah, that's correct. So Josh can't be working. Okay, and number six now. I must lose my memory. I keep forgetting to do things. Hmm. Same thing, I think. No. <laughs> Same as number five. Uh, I must be losing my yeah. Yeah, that's, I that's... keep forgetting. Uh huh. You see, she's so talking. Mm -hmm. So the person is, is sort of complaining about uh, his or her problems. And that's something that's still going on, and it's recent, right? I keep forgetting to oh, do yeah. things. So I keep forgetting to do things. So this means I must be losing my yeah. mind, or, or at least losing my memory. Be. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, I must be losing my memory. Yes, I must be losing my memory. All right, number seven, the last one, Ryan. We may need uh, some more milk. Yeah, I think that's that's it. Uh, we may need some milk. 
and you can obviously see it's a state map. All right, so you can see this this structure using deduction is very uh, it's very detailed. I think it's quite rich, right? If you think of it, it gives a lot of color to your uh, to your conversation when you when you're able to use uh, deductions in a, in, a, in, a, in a nice way. Um, they're very nice, I think. They're not they're not too common. So if you use them correctly, you you convey a very specific meaning. And at the same time, you sound like someone who has control of his language, like saying here, number six, I must be losing my memory. I keep forgetting to do things. Or for example, um, I must be losing weight. All my um, pants or all my trousers aren't fitting me anymore, right? So don't fit me anymore. So here, it's, these are good examples. Um, OK, so number seven, let's move to number seven. So here they want you to listen to six short recordings of sounds and voices, write sentences with must, may, might, could, or can't for each recording. Mm. All right. So I think it's not included. Uh, mm, okay, okay. I think I got the exercise. So here maybe they're, they're going to show you a situation or maybe they're going to talk about a situation. But you need to write the whole sentence from, from the beginning. So you're not going to hear the sentence. You're going to hear a situation. You get the idea. So here in, in, in the first recording, I think maybe someone is complaining about the water, right? Or making a sort of uh, a reaction sound or something. And the response to this could be, the water must be too cold. Um, so I think if we play them, so you can hear them. be a lot clearer. So track five, track five. Okay, let's listen. Track five. One. <sighs> Two. Okay, let's talk about uh, the first uh, sound. The first. Uh, so here is it clear? Uh, sorry. No, no, the, you're talking about the second one. Sharp, it's a sort of circuit. Yeah, yeah the, the first one. What about the first one? No, I can't tell you. I'm going to tell you. The sound is changing. The sound is changing? Yeah, I don't know how to do it. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go. Okay. And you could have found the recording, or you could have found the CD. You could have listened to the CD, except the sound. ولا صوت هنا؟ ما كمل لين صارب صوت شخصي يعني. أمم، ماذي ممكن خلطة الكونكشن ماذي؟ بس. 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 Yeah, no. Uh, maybe somebody, somebody maybe, maybe cooking or something. That's the, the second, first one or the second one. You're talking about the second sound, right? Yeah. Yeah, number two. Okay. How can you make a sentence with must, might, may, could, or, or can't for, for the second, the cooking sound? What's the sentence you would write? She must be cooking. Okay, she must be cooking. Uh, she must be cooking. Uh, Can you be a little more specific? Must she uh, must be cooking some eggs. Uh, but the, the what do we use for maybe... it? Yeah, no, huh? Oil. Uh, the, uh, the lunch uh, might be done. 
Uh, lunch might be done. Lunch might be done. Yeah, also possible. Uh, I would say she uh, she could be, or if it, or maybe it's a he or she. We don't know. Let's assume it's a she. She could be frying an egg, right? That's what I would assume. Yeah. Because there was. Uh, it's much noisier than than just frying an egg. You think maybe the microphone is is yeah. right inside the pan. <laughs> No, it looks like uh, when you. Uh, uh, when you frying some uh, vegetables or something. Yeah. Okay. Fries. Yeah, yeah. Maybe let's let's say she could be, she might be, uh, frying vegetables, right? Frying fresh vegetables, right? So the idea, because I use could and might, it's okay if I'm wrong, you get the idea, because could is sort of in the yeah. middle. It's weaker, I'm not really sure. Uh, the first one she must be cooking is, is probably suitable, yes. Yeah, because it's uh, cooking, we all agree it's cooking and must is suitable here. But the other ones, uh, they're a little softer. So even if we're wrong, that's okay. All right, let's listen to the third, to the third uh, sound. Three. Oh, come on. Come on. Oh. Okay. What about this one? He must be uh, then Hamdrasullah. Uh, locked in the traffic. Yeah, stuck. Stuck in traffic. Stuck right? in the traffic. Stuck stuck over. He must be stuck in traffic. That that's that's a good one. Yeah. No, no. What what would you choose for this one? Uh, he's maybe late. He could be late for work. For work. Right? Yeah. Or he he may late. be he may be late for work. He could be late for work. Might be late for work. I agree, okay. These are good sentences. Let's see the next one. Four. Uh -huh. I have no idea. No, this is quite easy, actually. Uh, uh, it must be... Uh, a good game. It must be a good game or it must be a good match. Yes. Yeah. Um, you can say. Uh, yeah, Sop Mubara. Yeah, yeah. It, it sounds like a stadium. The fans in the stadium. Mm. Yeah. If, if you didn't hear it clearly, Brian, maybe, I don't know, maybe your earphones are a little funny today. Did you hear it clearly? Yeah. I heard it, but I, he I didn't hear someone cheering. Or, no, it wasn't uh, someone. There's whistling. Yeah. There was whistling, and there uh, was a whole crowd, a whole crowd cheering. Mm -hmm. Let me repeat it very quickly for you. Four. And there was also clapping. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see the next one. Four. Uh, 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 weird. But yeah, it's a, it's a match. So you can say it uh, it could be uh, or it must be a great match. Huge crowd. It, there must be uh, there must be lots of people, or there could be a huge crowd, or they or if you want to use the thing happening now, if you want to use the ing, they could be they must be winning. hearing their team, right? 
or they could be yeah. uh, supporting their, their home team, right? Or you can say the player could have scored a goal. Could have mm -hmm. scored. Yeah. So, you know, it's open. Let's see number five. Let's see the, first, the fifth one. Five. Good morning. Hello, Mr. Johnson. Mm. What do you think uh, is uh, there, there might be uh, know each other. They might know each other without B, yes? Yeah. They might know each other, correct? Yeah. yeah. Um, if you want to use the, or if, let's say you want to use the ING, uh, no, you want to talk about it happening now, what would you say? Uh, they may be working together. Nice, they may be working together, right? Or they might be having a meeting. Uh, or or they could be having a cup of coffee, right? Yeah. So, or he could be cheating on his wife, meeting another woman. But he called him Mr. Johnson, so maybe that's it's not a, it's, it's unlikely. Brian, what do you think in this situation? Brian, did yeah. you hear number five? So, uh, voice lal. You didn't hear the recording. No. See, you have a problem in your phone or in your. Yeah. You want to uh, maybe sign out and sign back in again? I had a visitor. Shwe on Okay. No. Okay. Let's hear number six, and then we can receive when he's back. Six. What do you think? Uh, might be preparing a cup of tea. Okay, he might be preparing a cup of tea. Mm -hmm. Okay, other options? Uh, could be having uh, his or her breakfast. Or his coffee. Okay. He could be having his breakfast. He could be having uh, a cup of tea. Good options, all of them. Mm. Okay, let's see what's Ibrahim. Are you back, Ibrahim? Yeah. All right, I want you to, to listen to the last recording, the last sound. Tell us what you think. And then we'll tell you what we think. What do you think? He must be drinking some tea. He must be drinking some tea. Yeah. Uh, but but in the beginning, didn't you hear like uh, the sound of soda or you know some kind yeah. of soft drink? It felt like soda at the beginning, right? Yeah. It was, it was a, a gassy yeah. sound, or maybe beer. Yeah. Seven Up, maybe Pepsi. I don't know. There and then the yeah, the, the stirring. Maybe it's the stirring of stirring, ice cubes. Exactly. Right? Uh, I'm not sure. So nobody. Yeah. Nobody. After I... Yes. No. Uh -huh. Nobody. I don't think there is anyone uh, staring uh, ice cubes. Hey, so, yeah. Yeah. You're, that's yeah, right. That's it, it sounds was... like hot, uh, boiled water. It sounds like uh, boiled water. Exactly. Boring, boring something the spoon hitting the the glass. 
Yeah, yeah, you're right. Man. I, th I think boiling water, boiling water might make more sense than so there. Because there was a bit of a bubbly sound yeah. in the beginning, that's why. So maybe maybe boiling water is. So we could say he could be making a cup of tea. Uh, he must be having a cup of tea or he must uh, be stirring some tea, whatever it is, uh, as long as it's related to tea maybe or coffee. Yeah, it's probably probably right. So you, you get the feel of this uh, lesson, right? So, so here they just want you to to be able to use modal verbs uh, to make deductions, not only for possibility, but deductions is like a, a specific way of using possibilities. Um, mixing, must, mixing, uh, uh, can't, and all the other modal verbs to make a deduction. All right, I think we can move on. I think this book could be Karen's, she must be learning. I think the point is clear now, we can move on. All right, in this lesson, I do. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think I do refers to here? Uh, Besides something? Um, it's a bit specific here. Maybe Ibrahim, maybe Ibrahim with some movie culture can, can know. What do you think? Marriage? Yes, that's it. It's about marriage. Yeah, but what's the question mm. for I do? And I'm you marry me. <laughs> yes, yes, okay. uh, yes. No, because uh, you know, movie, movie culture. Yes, no, Brahim has good movie culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I do. So here it's uh, it's it's very uh, it's sort of a trademark response for 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 accepting a marriage proposal. So usually the guy he comes on one knee, you know, those romantic movies, would you marry me? Do you want to marry? Well, what's the, what's the phrase, Brian? Usually but I'm wondering, huh? But I'm wondering. wondering. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Brian, what's, what's the question usually? Uh, would you marry me? Is it would you marry me? So the guy usually says, or do, do you will want you to marry, marry me? Marry? Will you, will you, will you? That's the right one, not would, will you? Will you marry me? Yes. And she says, I do, yeah. All right, okay. So we can already see that from the from the headline or the title of the lesson, it's related somehow to, to marriage. Uh, but we also have a few phrasal verbs. Mm, I think the focus here is uh, reading. It's a lesson. It's a reading lesson this time. And maybe they're going to focus on skimming and maybe even scanning. Let me take a look at the questions so I can tell you uh, the meaning. Okay, so it's it's a vocabulary, it's a it's a lesson with emphasis on vocabulary. Okay, so it's a change. Let's check the reading questions first. So let's start with number one. What is the average cost of a wedding in your country? Do you think? Mm. Very relevant question, right? Because you're you're in an age where you're about to get married, I think now. Uh, uh, when? Whoa. <laughs> But what do you think what do you think the average cost uh, of a wedding in your country is? Um, um with the house and or without the house. I think I think uh, the house, let's think of it, let's think of a traditional Libyan wedding, okay? For people who live in Tripoli or or for families here in Tripoli. Uh, usually, I think uh, whenever there is a marriage proposal, I think the guy should already have the house, right? Or at least maybe a flat or an apartment. Yeah, above his I mean, parents house. should I count the yeah. house or without? Yeah, yeah, it? yeah, include, include it, yeah, include it in the cost. Okay. Will the place where they do their, yeah, the yeah. Salah, ah, yeah, where, yeah. which one? Uh, because... let's say this is, let's say this is an upper middle class family. So you, you want a good one, maybe not the most expensive in Tripoli, okay. but let's say, let's say in the top five in Tripoli. Tamam. All right. And, uh, what, gold, gold, how much gold do, do, do people bring in weddings? Actually, maybe, I don't know. Maybe know how you can, you know about this, uh, how much. You know, I know that there's the sudra, my sudra I child. I don't know what the, the stuff is. Yeah, yeah. What was the word? 
في آه. حرب <تصفيق> هو حرب هو مش حاسه يس ناو واتس يور كويستشن وات واز ذا وورد جو 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 وورد ديت يو ساي بيفور واتس ذات ات واز ان عربي قلت اللي هو الصدره وش يسموها الانواع الذهب اللي يعطوا فيهم في العرس اه اوكي شوف حاجة نحسب المهر ولا بنحسبها؟ هو تو بدو يساعدوا نوعا ما قال لك في المهر I'm not sure how much it costs مقدم المؤخر Yeah but I think it's all, it should be included in the cost right؟ تمام توك يسكرنا على المليون <تصفيق> No you're exaggerating <تصفيق> okay مش مليون الا شوية <تصفيق> Yeah, but, hey, but, nine, 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 nine. <laughs> yeah, but but uh, he's making a point now. He's exaggerating, of course. We're joking, but but uh, the costs have skyrocketed, don't you think? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, I just compare them to 10 years ago. Not we don't want to compare with with you know with our parents and our grandparents. Every and... everything, actually everything, uh, steeply uh, increased. Correct. Not just yeah. the marriage uh, expenditure mm-hmm. or wedding hey, expenditures. Um, everything. Are, yeah, everything. Even the houses were. Yeah. True. Everything. Yeah. That's why I was asking about the house. The, 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 the love of bread. Yeah, the food. Yeah, everything. Uh, as the 10 years ago. As Correct. same as. Yeah. So if we think of it in, in, in this. In this way, naturally, my marriage cost will also increase. Maybe, but do you think do you think the increase in, in cost in the cost of weddings is it correlated with the general increase in everything else, or do you think you know, that uh, the cost of weddings uh, increased a little more than the, the increase in everything else? What's what's your take on this, Noah? What do you think? Uh... I think people nowadays focusing more, a bit more on, uh, how can I say that, on something uh, superficial, not uh, not uh, something they really need. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, in Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I think that's why. Uh, if we can, if we compare the uh, the, the expenditure uh, uh, to ten years be, uh, before, you can find it. It's it's more. It's a bit more, more because mm. there's a lot of uh, a lot of expenditures that uh, people don't really need to do. Yeah. So you think there are too many extra expenses that you know you yeah. could get rid of that we could easily get rid of? Is that what you think? Yeah, mm. the trade nowadays of uh, of uh, um, celebration. Yeah, trade of celebration nowadays is very costly. Mm. Yeah. And it's also becoming a business, I think. Uh, and the people yeah. who who run, you know, halls and gift shops and these things, they know that in weddings, uh, most Libyans they just spend everything they have, and it's a yeah. it's, it's a dangerous culture, I think. It's, it's a kind yeah, of a, because they they are making they they yeah, uh, uh, the business the people who are making business of this. They just release the trend mm-hmm. and uh, make a money out of that. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
يا وهذه هي بتبدا ترند يعني يصوروها ينزلوها تبدا ترند تبدا الناس كلها تولي يعني سمثينج نيسيسري يعني هي حاجات في النهايه كلها افيميرال يعني المفروض تكون لكن يا يا اي ثينك ذس از فيري سيميلر تو وات ذا ويست وات هابينينج وات هابينز ان ذا ويست ديورينج ميجر هوليدايز رايت ات لايك لايك وات هابينز ان كريسماس You know, one store yeah. or one shop starts a trend of you have to do this, you have, to, and everybody has to yeah. buy cards. Everybody has to to do the the buy gifts. You know, it's a it's a whole industry now around yeah. the, the Western world, and and weddings here in Libya are, are are becoming the same. These trendsetters, you know, and they force everybody else to to do it. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. People What about to, to make a wedding like a festival? <laughs> <laughs> just not the occasion. Uh, uh, it's just not just a social occasion. It's yeah. like a festival. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's 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 a lot more than just marriage. It becomes this whole yeah. scene, this whole event. And uh, but but uh, my question is, uh, do you think uh, culture has a role in in this? Um, I mean, I mean, you're, you're completely right when you said that these people who start these little trends, and the question is, why do these trends pick up so quickly? Why does any, everybody want the latest way of folding the tissues or, or the most expensive baklava or, or the, the, the most expensive flowers or car decoration? Or, I don't know these details. Why, why do these things pick up uh, from the beginning? Why do, why do you think... Why don't people uh, just say no? We're not going to do it. We're just going to settle for. Because, because they, they are a kind of. Uh, it's related to the wedding itself, uh, and um, in the wedding, usually people, or especially women, bride and uh, the group, want everything to be perfect, to be uh, memorable, to be. Uh, special mm -hmm. because they are focusing on the idea that it's that that um, how can I say that it's one day in whole life mm -hmm. un unrepeatable. Okay, yeah. so let's do everything like special. So mm. people who knows that trying to man manipulate um, uh, parents. And to uh, persuade them to, to uh, give your daughter the best at her special day, mm -hmm. uh, help your son to get what she what he wants for his special day for his special new life. Mm -hmm. So it's on. Yeah. And in addition to the social media, these things become. Um, spreadable uh, much more fa faster. True. Yeah, if one if one wedding or if one person does it, then his cousins want to do it, his neighbors want to do it, his friends want to do it, yeah. his other brothers who who didn't get married yet want to do it and want to do even bigger than it. Right. So it it sort of builds up. Mm. True. I kind of agree with what you said. But what about Paying for weddings, uh, do I, th I think um, there's a bit of a change. Before it used to be mostly the, I think the man's family and, and the man or the groom, uh, but now I think it's uh, there's a bit more equality now. From last time, I think I had a discussion with one of my parents. I think they sort of uh, most families, at least here in Tripoli, they they do a bit of a division. I think because some people take care of the hall, the others take care of I don't know. Uh, the, the lunches, the Azuma, the other take care of traction, right? Do you, you think this yeah, is yeah. This They're becoming sharing more common? The, the expenditure, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it's not uh, original, uh, it's not original uh, culture or uh, tradition, Libyan tradition. It's It comes from uh, from interacting throughout the social media with other cultures. Mm. Yeah, so, it's a good point here, yeah, because where did this come yeah, from? Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely not traditional. 
yeah, we uh, Libyan here influenced by other cultures mm -hmm. to to do the same. So I, I don't think because there's um, um, not uh, each family in Libya doing uh, this thing. So. Yeah. People follow each other a lot more here than they're not yeah, as but, independent but as are, But families who are most involved in in such an interaction throughout the social media and um, oh, see the mm, uh, that people doing their oh, it's a nice idea. Let's do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So ideas spread and they keep they keep trying new things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're adapting uh, uh, just a new or traditions from other maybe countries, maybe other um, um, province in Libya, mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah, and but uh, if if we want to, I think Ibrahim did a bit of this when he when he calculated where the money goes. But uh, nowadays, where does the I mean? Uh, the money, what, what is it spent on other than the, the, the flat or the house, uh, the, the hall and the invitation to the, you know, uh, to lunches and dinners? What else is there usually included in the expenses of, uh, of weddings today? Uh, I think that's all the feast. Yeah, uh, uh, by the way, I wasn't exaggerating about the costs. <laughs> I think I think one million. If you count if you count the land, if the if the groom or the husband doesn't have land yet yet, and he yeah. wants to buy a land and he wants to build, yes, he, exactly. He can, yeah, he can easily and the get furniture to, and the furniture. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. he can easily reach yeah. one million and even more. Yeah, the, and the whole the whole expenditure to start a new life, but wedding expenditure itself doesn't cost uh, one million dinner. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If, if, the, but, if uh, the house is ready. Yeah, you can you, you can spend more than one million. I agree with yeah. you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can. Uh, it's easy to find. Uh, um, not a castle, just a duplex or something. In one million and half, maybe or mm -hmm. an and two hundred fifty. Yeah, true. Especially in expensive neighborhoods, roughly yeah. yeah. so Highlanders, you can easily yeah, find houses. The, 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 the neighborhood, yeah. So it's it's not uh, it's not uh, it's true. Mm. You need more than one million to to set up your new life. Yeah, or, true. Or About life. me, um, how I see marriage right now. It's just about money, they, how they spend money about the wedding festival. Yeah. There isn't, there isn't uh, much see, more than I that, didn't that, hear that <laughs> None? I didn't hear you. What did you say? They are just showing how much uh, yeah, money yeah. they have yeah. and how they can uh, have... yeah. You're right. spend it. Yeah, there's yeah. lots of showing up, true. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 because yeah. how my mom to uh, tells me there's for every table there's a cake and everyone wants their Nescafe or something. Or... It's 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 good to to have a problem just with the cake. Maybe the cake it's something useful. Yeah. They can eat it. Uh, it's not how they eat. It's not. What they don't you... eat it. Yeah, what they just I, took what... a little piece and throw it just. <laughs> yeah. <in the> house. <laughs> yeah. What about and what the about... men just waiting outside, yeah, uh, <laughs> drinking just water? <laughs> but, but, uh, but they at least there, there's something eatable. Okay, what about the boxes that they should uh, put the baklava in it? Yeah, you know the little, How much the little they... containers. Two dinners, three dinners yeah. per box. How much they, they could how much they could cost you? Yeah. For nothing. To yeah, throw them away. 
Yani to pick up the, the clawa and throw them away. Exactly. You are putting your money in the, in the garbage. Uh, garbage. <laughs> yeah. 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 If you just burn the money, it would be easier. <laughs> it would. Yeah. There, there's lots of unnecessary. This is the word, by the way, I, yeah. which explains all of this. This is extravagance. You yeah. are the mubalaga or the showing off. Too much extravagance and all of it is just a display. It's just a show to show how wealthy we are. And most of it just yeah. goes into the, into the garden. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the true, the, the wealthy people, they tend to not expense a lot of money. Yeah, they're cheap. Many, many rich yeah. people are quite cheap. They don't want yeah. to spend. Yeah. I think that I think extravagance is more with the middle class and the lower middle class. More, more, they want to show that we're not poor. Look how much we're spending, right? Yeah. I think maybe yeah. it's also related to class. It's it's a big topic. I think the topic of wedding. Yeah. Right? You have a like, you know, subject for your the next. Yeah, maybe in my next class. conversation. Yeah. The, the problem, most of my views on wedding are, are a bit too, weddings and marriage are a bit, a bit too negative. So I don't want yeah, to but, that, get yeah. people depressed. I don't want people to stop getting married. So maybe my views will stop people from getting married. But I think we, we do yeah. have a problem. We need to work on these problems because uh, this, this, this is making it very difficult for people who, who want to get married. It's making it difficult for them. And you know, in an indirect way, I think this is, uh, in my opinion, this is my personal opinion. I think it's a lead cause in the corruption happening in the country. Because when you have exactly. people who are young like us, for example, younger men, and we want to get married, there's no way I can make this money unless I join some militia, unless I become corrupt, I get Exactly, yeah, borrow some money. Yeah, you know? Because hey, this will speed up the process. <laughs> so this, in a way, because of this, this social restrictions, it, pu it pushes people to, to that direction. I'm not saying uh, yeah. uh, if, if we didn't have to, we would be innocent. No, but it's a factor. Uh, yeah, hey, 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 hey. You know, I'm in need, Z. Yeah, so it's a bit, we need to think of these things. And even if you think of it from a religious point of view, this is, this is against Islam. This extravagance. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is exactly yeah. what the Prophet said you shouldn't do. He tried, the Prophet tried to make weddings and marriages as easy as possible. He did as possible, to, yeah. Yeah, so, so I think we need yeah, to. Yeah, I think we need 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 to. Yeah, I think yeah, so things are, you know, and I think both, uh, we can blame both sides. I don't want to just blame uh, the, yeah, the women's I'm sure side. Men too, yeah, men too uh, are, are not doing a great job, I think. Uh, because, yeah, because they accepted. True. And a lot of wedding culture is in the hands, in the hand of mothers, if you think of it. Uh, when, when a guy wants yeah. to get married, if I want to get married, most of these things are in the hand of my mother. And my mother comes from another culture, yeah. you know, from a, an older cu culture, and she she's probably more likely yeah. to follow traditions than I would. For me and let's say my fiance or, or wife, we would accept, you know, just fat half feast uh, and a lot of a lot. For, for me and her, maybe we, yeah. we would simple we would accept stuff. that. Yeah, simple for our generation and maybe the younger generation. But our parents, my parents, her parents, definitely would not accept this, you know, no, because it's a special yeah. day. And it's important. There are reputations. There's prestige. There's extravagant. You get the idea. So I think maybe the the newer generation we need to, you know, maybe we need to twist uh, uh, the the arms of our parents a little harder and tell them, yeah, you know, this is too much. You're taking it too much. Let's simplify yeah. it. Let's take it. You know, sort of. It's better to so instead of, yeah. yeah instead of buying all of these disposable things. It would be a lot better if you just spent this on your honeymoon, on furniture, on a car, yeah. on education. <laughs> 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 right? So 
there, there are things which can be done, I think. It needs a little bit of work. And who knows, maybe in the next generation, things will, will be a little better. Yeah, kind of low <laughs> yeah. let's see. Uh, okay, so the topic actually here, it's also about weddings. And uh, it's also about extravagance, maybe not so much about extravagance, but costs are mentioned. Excuse me. So here, I'd like you to, uh, I think we have to read the, uh, the article first, and then after that, we can check the questions in number two. Um, okay, so uh, I'll give you some time to read this. Um, when you get to the bottom, Ibrahim, just tell me and I'll, I'll scroll down, because the topic uh... is... Ah. All right, okay then. So, so whenever you finish the, the article, same thing for you now, we can uh, check the questions, okay? Okay. Come mm -hmm. on. Yeah. <laughs> Already from the first paragraph, it looks like an interesting uh, topic. Yeah. <laughs> I lost three husbands, mashallah. <laughs> whoever is writing, the, whoever wrote the article, yeah. it's very interesting. It's, it's someone who doesn't like, apparently, doesn't like weddings and, and marriage a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Have you finished? <laughs> 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 Did you finish to the end, Brian? 
Yeah, I was going to say K-pop, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I think the yeah. statistics, the, the numbers and the figures are, are amazing. I know, uh, I've read this figure, by the way. Uh, I think it was about the US. Now, I, th- I think the divorce rate is around 49, 50%. So it's almost like a one in two chance. Uh, of course, this is in the West, yeah. not here in Libya. Divorce rates are still a lot lower here. Um, but I mean, if, if I was, if I were an American guy or a British guy, I would never get married. Not only is it okay, <laughs> because uh, I wouldn't be a Muslim, let's say. But even statistically speaking, why would I get married if the, the, the chances are 50%, one, one in two, right? That I will get divorced. And divorce is also almost as expensive as, as marriage itself. It's like, uh, statistically speaking, it's not, uh, it's not a smart investment, if you think of it. Because um, divorce in Libya is free. So you can't take a chance. <laughs> yeah, you see, this is the real thing. Divorce in Libya is free. And yeah. I think I think husbands now in the, in the new law after the revolution, we don't uh, we don't even have to pay that, that much uh, child support under the law. I think I think under Gaddafi's law, he was a little stricter about this than, than now. I think uh, divorced uh, uh, the, the, the man, the husband, uh, sure, he has to pay some kind of new uh, nafaka, child support, but I don't. I think he can. He can easily, um, you know, he can easily escape it, or if he's powerful, yeah. if he has a militia or whatever, you know, he could just ignore it. Nobody will force him if he doesn't want to. Yeah. How can you force him? There's no law in the country, so this is not a very good thing for for mothers, of course, and uh, wives. So mm, it's a little scary. Maybe that's why many women put up with bad marriages, if you think of it, right? They don't want to be divorced because it's not a very good uh, option if there's not a very good law. But in the West, uh, when I was in Brazil, uh, they even made a law for partnership. So they're not even married. They're just a boyfriend and girlfriend. But if they live together for a, for a sufficient uh, an amount of time, uh, she becomes entitled to some of his money. So if they break up, he has to actually pay, uh, you know, some some kind of uh, makeup money or whatever it is. You get the idea. So so they take they That's take. Uh, why always men good question. pay? Good, good question. In Allah, قال قوامنا Allah قال قوامنا على النساء. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point, Brian. And this is one of the, the problems now with with uh, with people who uh, there's you know feminism. There's like an opposite. Yeah, There's an opposite movement. There is a, a men's right movement. And I've watched the documentary and some of these activists, men, men's rights, they're complaining that the law is biased. So they're complaining, for example, let's say a husband and wife divorce. Uh, the court will almost always give custody of the children to the mother, even when there is proof that the mother, for example, in some cases, the mother is maybe mentally troubled or uh, abuses the children. She hits them or whatever. The court is still likely I think the number is eight uh, in, in every 10 divorces, custody goes to, to the mother and the father is prevented from even seeing his children. And this of course causes lots of stress and psychological harm to fathers who love their children. They had maybe a disagreement with the mother but it doesn't mean they don't love the children anymore. It doesn't mean that they're not his children anymore. Get the idea. And uh, the mother, many mothers, they yeah, yeah. enjoy leaving the ex-husband in such agony, you know, they, 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 they want to make it as difficult as possible and they make divorces very difficult and very expensive. And uh, yeah, this is, this is true, this happens in the West, especially in, uh, in, in, in the very liberal and progressive countries like uh, Canada, uh, Germany, UK, um, these, these uh, so many men activists are complaining that it's not fair. You know, they, they have problems. We, all cultures have problems, of course. 
this is a hot topic now in, in the West, this, this problem of, of custody, marriage, uh, the, uh, you know, the money, the alimony, uh, uh, there is a man, I, uh, sometimes he pops on YouTube. Jordan Peterson. He's written. I don't know, in CNN maybe or on the news, how he talks about women and their nagging. It's pretty funny, actually. Is he a, is he a comedian? No, he's not a comedian. He, I think he's a politi uh, politician. But it's really funny how he talks about women. And he, yeah. Man. Yeah, so these, these are, you know, social, uh, social issues. But the, the thing, I think the, yeah. best, the advantage is they speak about it. They speak about their problems. I think we need more transparency. I think we need to we need to speak about more our problems here in the Middle East and in, in Arab and Muslim countries. I think we need to discuss problems specific to our culture, maybe in the same way, try to solve them. Because if nobody talks about a problem, nobody can can solve it. Just like the issue Noah was talking about, the the, the the spending of the expenses for things which will be thrown away. If this topic is presented in the news and you have, uh, for example, hosts and presenters who are serious and know what they're talking about and they discuss these things. Yeah. And then they leave the decision to the people. We don't want the, the, the presenter yeah. to say, oh, you have to do this, you don't have to do that. Just open yeah, the Yeah, it's a debate. Yeah, they let the debate yeah. yeah, and then people can think about it, it be, they become aware of it. But if something is not mentioned, uh, you know, nobody will think about it and everybody will assume this is normal. In Libya, yeah. mm -hmm. can I make a point here? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. In yeah. Libya, if you uh, introduce this uh, or if you uh, open this uh, subject um, among a um, group of, of bunch of people, they will agree that you are right, mm -hmm. that you are just, uh, that it's uh, not good to throw away money in, a, in, in some containers and some, some uh, something disposal, uh, something um, you can't make use of it many times yeah. or you don't need it, that's it. But when they are uh, at action time, they will do the same. <laughs> exactly. The, the, when it's their wedding, they will buy them. They'll yeah, be the yeah. first in line to buy that. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. You can have a debate as much as you can with people. They like are with you. They will agree with you. One hundred. Yeah. Hundred percent. Mm -hmm. But when they are want to do something, they will do the opposite. Yeah. Libyan mind. Yeah, that's that's a problem. Yeah. Uh, it's a mentality. The, the, a mentality. the contradict, yeah, contradiction between uh, doing and saying uh, what you say and what you do is living mentality. Mm, I think true. It, it it is a bit of a problem. Mm, okay, let's 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 check here uh, Olivia's uh, problems and her <laughs> her lifestyle. So hey. uh, number two here, let's see. So let's answer these uh, questions. So, so uh, the husband that uh, Olivia is marrying this time, is he her first? Uh, sorry, is he her first, first or, or his? Uh, or fourth. fourth. Yeah, number four. And what about Ginny, her bride, bridesmaid? Did she, she went to her wedding or she didn't go? What happened at the end? She went to her wedding. She went. Yeah, she, she tried to escape, but eventually yeah. she had to. All right, and uh, number three, Jimmy had or hadn't been a bridesmaid for Olivia before? Had. Uh, she had. Yeah, true. Olivia has All kept, of them, yeah. Have to, has kept in touch with her ex-husband. Is this true? Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, yeah she has. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And number five, more people in the UK are getting married or fewer? Fewer. Fewer. Yeah, less people. That's correct. Fewer people. All right. Okay. Now, uh, these numbers, let's take a quick look just to remind ourselves of the figures and statistics. So uh, 20,000, what does it refer to here? 
20,000 pounds. What was this in the article? About what? The cost uh, of what? Co a wooden cost in UK. Wooden cost, yeah, yeah typical yeah. wedding cost. Yeah, this is so remember, keep in mind, this is average. There are weddings that are, of course, more and some yeah. are less, but this is sort of typical. Well, six, six hours? What's uh, what the uh, uh, the 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 number of hours that uh, uh, party lasts. Yeah, the wedding itself. Yeah, the, the event or yeah. the celebration. Yeah, the, the 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 wedding itself it lasts for about six hours. Mm -hmm. It's not even a long wedding. It's not like our kind of traditional two day three day wedding, right? So it's mm -hmm. uh, it's quite short. Okay, and uh, 3,300 pounds, what does this refer to? So, what's up the last la mio sabah hamsin alf? There's an ilibi. Mio sabah hamsin alf. There's an ilibi. But this is. Sound at home, tal pound. But, ah, ah, you're calculating the pound thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I thought you were doing it for Libyan weddings. Yeah, yani min pound lil jni libi. Yeah, yeah. No, I thought 175 I said had in the Aras Libya. Oh, no. Yeah. Mm, okay, okay. And so 3,300, what's this, Brain? This number? 3,300 pounds for what? Uh, the cost of what? Uh, so that's about yeah, an hour. Olivia must be cost of wedding per hour maybe yeah the, the, the wedding party itself the wedding uh, celebration yeah. itself because remember they said it's six hours and the cost is about twenty thousand pounds but if you if you yeah. break that down into hours that that uh, comes down to three thousand three hundred pounds per hour what about fifteen thousand pounds what's this now average cost of divorce yeah yeah and what about four hundred and fifty nine thousand What's this number? What this uh, number? Weddings in UK in uh, 1971. Uh -huh. Yeah. And the other number, 231,000? Uh, weddings in 2009. Mm -hmm. What about 45%? Divorce, divorce rate, rate in the UK. And 12%? In Italy, yeah. divorce rate. Mm. Also, this is another very interesting topic, the, the issue of divorce and divorce rate. Uh, I mean, for us, Italy and the UK, you know, they're not that different yeah. for, a, for an Arab Muslim country. But obviously, in, in this part, I mean, when it comes to divorce, the, the, the difference is huge. 45% uh, yeah. and 12, there must be something more specific, you know, culture specific thing. Anyways, maybe we'll come back to that. Let's, let's check free. Now let's let's have a look at the phrasal verb. Now, here in the article itself, in the, in the article itself, <laughs> can you just before we do the question, can you check the? Did you read the the here the the comic at the bottom of the, the article? Did you see it? Yeah. <laughs> did you check it now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice. It's funny. Yeah. Uh, okay, so, so let's check the, the, the phrasal verb here. So um, we want to take a look at the phrasal verb and see their meaning. Now, uh, remember, in, when the, in context, I think, I'm sure none of you, well, I mean, neither of you had a problem with, with the article. But now we want to, let's say, scan a little closer. And we want to figure out what these phrasal verbs mean. I think most of them are not new to you. I don't think we're, we're going to have any problem, but let's do it together. Okay, let's start with the first one, which is used as an example. So when we say get uh, out of, it's obvious. It's uh, remember with phrasal verbs we have I want, uh, uh, to be involved in. Yeah, it means don't want to be a part of something. You don't want to be involved yeah. in something. You want to get out of this situation. But yeah. the, the general rule here, maybe Ibrahim, uh, this is new to you. With phrasal verbs, Ibrahim, there are some phrasal verbs which we call literal phrasal verbs. So the meaning is in, in the word itself, just like this one, to get, uh -huh. out, of, to get out of situation. Yeah. The meaning is in the word get out, right? It's, you know, it's very easy or it's obvious yeah. to, to, uh, to guess what it means. But some of them are slightly, they're not, the meaning is not literal. 
uh, like this one, got over. If you think of it, got over. Do you like go over an obstacle and get over? It's not very literal, you get the idea. Or another one like uh, put up with, do we have, no, we don't have put up with. But uh, do, you know, do you know the phrase of the verb uh, to put up with a bad situation, for example? Uh, no, to put up with. Have you yes. heard of this? Yeah, so put up with, for example, is a, is a phrasal verb where the meaning is not really literal. You have to, you have to guess it from yeah. context. But if Let you just put, see, off. put off, yeah, exactly. Put off the one we have here. If you see yeah. it on its own, if you just see yeah. the word put off without any words before it or after it. And off, this is, off. yeah. Which one? Call off. <laughs> Call off, yes, the same thing, call yeah. off. Yeah. I think it has to be in context, otherwise it's difficult to guess. Um, all right, so now we want a phrasal verb which has the meaning of feel better after you have been unhappy or ill. Mm. Mm. What do you think? Let's take a look again. I think it's um, it's got to... yes now uh, get over get over get over yes. yeah yeah you're right yes mm -hmm. to to get over yeah uh, a situation like here mm -hmm. Olivia got over her last three divorces quickly so it means she didn't suffer a lot you know she yeah. quickly uh, felt better after that. What about increase or rise? Mm, let me just write that over. Going up. Yeah, Fine. the number of divorces in the UK is going up. Yeah. Correct. And so Search. Mm. No, no, go, increase is going up. Uh, yeah. Ah, okay, number four. four. Yeah. Number four, I don't know how to say it. No. You have to use the phrasal verbs. phrasal verbs, the one in bold in the article, right? You see the bold, uh -huh. the bold one? Looked up. Yes, correct. Looked up. Uh, um, um, okay, what about number five? Uh, point out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Correct. You point out something to someone. Number six? Mm -hmm. Uh, truck from the loop. Okay. Let's start from the beginning. To someone. Uh, the side of the range. So we want something which has the meaning of delay mm. or postpone. Delay. Yeah, delay or or maybe postpone. It's over. No. No, Put we already off. used. Yeah. yeah. Put off is correct. Put off. Yeah. yeah. Mm. When you put off something, it means you know you postpone it. You let's leave it for another time. You delay it to put off something. Oops. Put off, let's write it and let's write it in. Okay, let's put off. Let's do something a bit later. So her friend wanted her to put off the wedding. She wanted her to know the guy a little better. Okay, so the next one is, uh, let's put, put off. 
Okay, what about number seven? Argue with someone and stop being friendly with. Split up. Mm, do we have split up here? Uh, عنا split up لكن مش هادي. في نقطة بعدها فيها split up. Got over. Got over. We used it. Got to got over is when you rebound or when you you know you get better after you were. You were ill. To get you got uh -huh. over you got over a, a bad flu. You got over maybe a divorce. Fall, maybe uh, falling out. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fill up. Yeah. To to fall out. Uh, this means you know um, you're not friends with any with someone anymore, right? We had a fallout, uh -huh. so so we're not friends anymore. This is the meaning. Maybe used to be friends, but not anymore. Um, okay, think of an idea or a solution to a problem. Number eight. Come up with. Come. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, come up with it. Yeah. And let's check the example, how they used it here in the article. They said... With a good excuse. Yes. I couldn't come up with a good excuse. She couldn't think of something at the moment. That's the idea. Yeah. All right. Now, the next one we have is end a marriage or a relationship. I think this is the... This is the one split you... Up. Yeah, you split up. Okay, and the last one, I think it's easy, you can find it. Uh, find something by an accident. Come across. Yeah, that's right. You come across something. It means you weren't really planning, but you found it. Yeah. All right, so these are some examples of uh, Facebook verbs used in the article here. Uh, check. I don't think we need to check them because they're kind of obvious. Let's move on and let's check this. All right, so here we have apparently four different types of phrasal verbs. All right, so let's see how they, let's see how they divide or categorize these phrasal verbs. So the first type Raheem, it's a little noisy there. Are you are you ironing a shirt or something? Yeah. <laughs> okay. She saw it. <laughs> yeah, there was like a kind of sound. Wow. Anyways, let, let's let's check these uh, four phrases, four four groups or four categories. So the first one is a phrasal verb that has no object. You two have never fallen out. Or you can say, for example, we had a uh, a falling out. So here in this example, there is no object to the phrase of verb, right? And I think this one is a little, they're not very common, this one. Um, I can't think of they split one. up. Split up. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah, correct. You're right now. It's, we split up. We split up. There's yeah. no There's no need for, uh, for an object, correct. Mm. All right, the second type, it says that uh, uh, phrasal verbs all, always have an object, and this is always after. Okay. So these are, um, I think these are called the non-separable phrasal verbs, because some phrasal verbs are separable. You can put, uh, you can put the, the object in the middle or after, like like group three. Um, here, mm -hmm. just mark. But uh, in group two, I think they're talking about the ones which are non-separable. It's not this one. Uh, here it is. Yeah. But uh, group two, these are non-separable in group two. Because here you cannot you cannot separate the, the object. 
uh, it has to come it has to come after the fatal event. So Olivia got oh got over her divorces quickly. She got over them quickly. Um, okay, so it's obvious the the object is after the fatal event. Now type three here it's uh, it's a bit of an an, uh, an option. So you can put it, you can, the object, uh, if it's a noun, of course, if it's a noun, you can put it in the middle or after the phrase of verb. So I looked some figures up. I looked up some figures, right? You, you can do it either way. Uh, I checked him up, I checked up on him. No, it's not the same. Um, but this is, of course, it's, if it's if you're using a noun. But if you're using a, if you're using a, a pronoun, it's not possible. So you can say, I looked them up, but you cannot say, I looked up them. Okay, Brian, are you with us? Yeah. Yeah, so here we're just, we're just categorizing, you know, how to use phrasal verbs, just the grammar of phrasal verbs. I think that's what it's talking about here. Okay, let's check our fourth group. So group four, um, these are the three, the three parts, the three part uh, phrasal verb. Okay, so phrasal verbs have, uh, that have three words and always have an object. The object is always um, after the phrasal verb. I try to get out of the whole thing. I try to get out of it. So here you cannot use get out without of. So you have all this part of the phrasal verb to get out of a situation, to get out of it, to get out of the whole thing, and so on. Okay, so now we have a better understanding of the different types. I think the next question, they, they want you to find... All right, let's do this. Now, let's go back. I think it's better if, we, if I show you both pages together. Okay, let's zoom in. Okay. And what do I do? Okay. Now, now what we want to do is we want to put the phrasal verbs we have in, in the article in the correct group. Okay. So, okay, I just need a quick second, I'll be back, but uh, let's start with the first one. So let's look for phrasal verbs which don't have an object. I think now I already mentioned uh, split up. Let's try split up. But can you find another one now? Another one which has no object. Go on, go. Uh, let me check. Going up. Yeah, it's still going up. Uh, correct. Going up, come, come up, pop up. No, the other ones have an object. Yeah. Okay, so split up, going up, falling out. These are uh, phrasal verbs with no object. All right, Rahim, your turn. Type two, you need to find phrasal verbs which um, which have an object and the object is always after the phrasal verb, okay? So try to find it. I'll be back in a second, okay? Okay. Um. Looked up, Sama. Looked up, Majish, Matu. Looked up, we. The worst mom of Sula. And the good one was to our and him and Moktahain, which not a Kalimat, Makel and Tempest, who bad had a full subject. They came across, Matala. Something.
they point out point out حتى هي في الوسط في ذس ذس هذه هيدا علي شنو ما يعني حاجه مع بعض الزوز هذو ما نمبر 3 يمشوا مع تايب 3 يعني هي حاجه زي جوت اوفر ريكي يكونوا كلمتين مع بعض ما فيش حاجه في النص لا جوت اوفر الفرق هم كلمتين هي فريز فيرب بتكون من كلمتين لكن اللي الجروب نتاع جوت جوت اوفر لازم السبجكت يجي بعدها ما تنفصلش ما تقدرش دير got something over ما تقدرش دير هيك مثلا اها <تصفيق> لكن الجروب 3 تقدر تدير دير something point something out فهمت لكن ما تقدرش تقول مثلا point out something لكن رقم ثلاثة يجي في الحالتين يعني إما ناون ويكون في الوسط مفصول باهي زي look them up if the object is pronoun, you must put it in the middle of the present verb. The middle. Eh. So who are they? Have a lash in middle point this out. In that, if we put this, we will point it out. For example, yeah. Turn back to the idea or the thing that is in your head or the idea that you say this. So here, pronoun is used. This is used for a pronoun or a noun, something, not a noun. فهنا لازم كل وسط هذا علاش معناها هذا جروب 3 point this out. اها. و وينها هذه جروب 4. get out of. وينها؟ get out of هذه مش واخ. هذه 4 هذه 4. 4 4 يمشي معاها come up with لنا ثلاثة كلمات come up with. اها. بعدهم هذه 4 حتى هي. Split up, تمشي مع one. Got over uh, one. Come across two. Come across the way I'm ten. The subject بعد على طول ما جيش في الوسط. بط بط. Look uh, up. Had three. Ah, you're checking. You're checking type three now. Well, I'm checking uh, all of them. All of them. Uh, okay. 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 In type two, what what did you find? The ones where you had the object directly after the came across. Yeah. Where's the came across? Let's check. Came across a newspaper. I think that's right. Get over. Also got over, right? Got over her divorces. Her last three well, divorces. Uh, example. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Katrina, for example, so that's correct, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, falling out now. I think only, that's only, all. yeah. Only one. The only one I think come across. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's write it. Come across. Hmm. Ah, no, sorry, come across from Mijmar before that. And in type in part two, come across. Okay, come across. Okay, part three, the ones where you can separate between the phrasal verb and, and the object. Uh, in the uh, example, we have looked up. Uh -huh. No, hi, yeah. Put the wedding off. Put off, put the wedding off. Uh -huh. So you have an option yeah. here. Put off, put the wedding off. Okay. So yeah, put no, off. No. Okay, what else? Point this out. Where is it? Yeah, point out. Another one. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see if we have another. Come across, look, what about look, oh, looked up is in the example. Yeah, these yeah. are these two, yes. Okay, all right. Now, last type, uh, here we want three parts phrasal verbs. Get out of, 
let's see if we have another one with, where we have three parts. I think it's the only one. Yeah, it's the only one, with. right? Get out. Uh, come up with. Out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right now. Come up with. Uh, come up with also has three parts. Here, Ibrahim, we're looking for phrasal verbs which have three parts, not two. Hey. Yeah. Come up with with is the only one we have other than get out of, come up with. Mm. Okay. All right, let's take a look at the summary. Let's confirm our answers and let's see if there's any tips we should check. Page 150, let's take a quick look. All right, so phrasal verbs, here we have the meaning. I don't think we need to check the meaning because we already did that. Uh, the grammar, okay, so here, these are our answers. Okay, fall out, lit up. These are the ones that don't, don't have an object, okay. Type two, the ones uh, get over, come across, correct. Look uh, something up, look up something, put something up, point something out, correct. And the last one, we only have get out with, get out of, come up with. Okay, so our answers are correct. Let's see the, the tip. Can you read the tip please, Brian? Uh, we can sometimes add a preposition, preposition mm -hmm. to some type one per uh, phrasal verbs to make them type four phrasal verbs. I never mm -hmm. fallen out with my brother, uh, Georgina, Georgina, Georgina. Just up with her boyfriend. Yeah. Okay. So it's just. Uh... Extra information. They're telling you the ones in type uh, one here. The mandush object. As an example, I'm to cut down something, or cut something, cut down on something. Uh huh. Cut something. Yeah, but but here they have uh, different meanings, a lot. If you say if you say cut down on something, it means you're you're yeah. reducing. You're decreasing its intake, right? Cut something right? down. Yeah, cut something down. Or you can say cut down on something. Um, I don't know about that. I think cut down on something, it means you decrease its intake. You cut down on sugar, right? But if, mm -hmm. you, cut, if you cut something down, it's like you cut a tree down. You get the idea? I think they have different things. I'm not sure, but... I think in this example, I think I have locked it up. I think they are the same, but just how to uh, write it in the middle uh, or preposition when you write it like uh, number four group type four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, that's what they're telling us. They are saying that with some with some phrasal verbs, you can do that. Yeah. Even if it doesn't have the object, you can add a preposition and, you know, complete, co connect it with the rest of the line, the rest of the sentence, I mean, because that's the job of prepositions, sort of connect uh, parts of the sentence together. Okay, okay, so nothing, you know, specific we need to check. All right, that means we can go back and we can go right away, start uh, with the, the exercise. Okay, let me return the page to one page display. All right. So we checked some of the, we checked the grammar of phrasal verbs, the different ways of using them. Okay, so here we have an exercise. All right, so look at the words in brackets. Uh, where can they go in these sentences? Okay, put a tick or a cross in the gaps. Mm. Ah, nice. This is a nice exercise. It's a, it's a positional exercise. All right. So Jeanette 
never got over her divorce. So this means, because you have get over, so you can say Jeanette never get over her divorce, but you cannot say Jeanette never got her divorce over. You get the idea? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can't do it. Raheem, are you with us? I Mark, like a Yeah. Yeah. Your, your silence is sort of showed. Okay, here, uh, let me explain it. It's, it's sort of, it's a nice, it's a smart exercise for a change. Okay, now this exercise, Ibrahim, the idea is, because remember the ones that we were working on, because I couldn't can't feel position. Uh, that's it. I couldn't do a few rules. Because some of them you can put them, take the transition the phrase of verb nefset, I looked up. I looked some figures up, I looked up some figures, I looked up some figures, some figures, you can put it in the phrase of verb and no problem. In, in some situations, you can't do that, of course. I mentioned type two, Heather, you can't do that, or even type four, I mean, you had, but it's just tough now. You get the idea. So in this exercise, they want you to practice the rules, that's all. So uh, here with number one, and of course, every example depends on the phrasal verb itself. Number one is an example of a phrasal verb where you cannot put the object uh, in the middle of the phrasal verb. The object has to go after it. So you can say, Jeanette never got over her divorce. Never got over it, for example. did her divorce. Uh, you can do that. What about number two, Bernie? He always puts off uh, his homework until the last minute. Okay, so he always puts off his homework. So this means we can use we can use it like this. Can you do it in the other way? He always puts his homework off until the last minute. Okay. Is that is that right or is it wrong? If you're not sure, let me scroll up to show you the rule so you can check. Put. Uh, no, no, I'm not sure. Uh, scroll up, please. Okay, let's check. So with the pull up, where did we pull put up? Where did we put pull up? We don't have pull up. Ah, puts off, puts off. We have puts off. Um, and after that, the article puts off. Can you see how she used it in, the, in this sentence, in the, in the third sentence? Yeah. Put, I thought yeah. she should put the wedding off. Put the wedding off. So here in this example, they put the object between the phrasal verb and its particle. So this means, what does it mean, Brian? Can you also say he uh, always between put, uh, puts and off? And and, uh, he always put his homework off. This means it's optional. Either way, either yes. way is fine. Do it any way you like. You can say he always puts his homework off until the last minute. He always puts off his homework until the last minute. In both situations, it's okay. Now, number three, Noah. Or I have a better uh, idea. No, I'll, I'll, sorry. You can do number four because number three is related to two. Hmm. Rahim, what about okay. number three? Yeah, same answer. Are you sure? We left right. because Try it you, first. Can, you can't you can't put it off any longer. Okay. You can't put put off put off it any longer. It, uh, Mm, what do you think? Is it the same? Um, as well, put it off like and we do true uh, like and uh -huh. put off it. Halt. You're right. Yes. 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 Correct. Yes. That's right, Nahan. Yes. In a full for rule, Gaelic we type uh, I think it can we can only type uh, three. Three. Yeah. Do you see this uh, tip here, Brian? This is exactly what what the example showed. You can say, I looked him up or I looked them up. 
لكن لانه هو بروناون ما عادش تقدر تحطها التالي زي قبل الناون اللي كنت يعطيها هذا علاش المثال الاول بتاع الهوم ورك مشت معك تحطها هيك تحطها هيك عادي هنا هوم ورك از ناون But when it becomes a pronoun, when it becomes it, your options are limited now. You have to put it in the middle only. It's not optional. You have to say, I looked him up, and uh -huh. he put it up, and so on. All right? So nice running. OK, now you can do number four. Elin didn't want to go, but he couldn't get out of it. انها برونو لازم تبدا في الاخير. يا جيت اوت اوف ات. جيت اوت ات اوف دازنت ميك سنس. نو. يا. اول رايت. نمبر 5 لوك 3 ذيز ووردز اب ان ا ديكشنري. اوكي لوك ذيز ووردز اب. اسيم زوز صح. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Okay, you know, number six. Yeah, it's optional. Uh, if you don't know the answer, look it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can't do it. Right. Uh, in the last. Mm -hmm. In the last. Correct. That's true. Uh, number seven, Brian. I came across this when I was cleaning. Mm -hmm. I came across this. Can we say I came this across? No. No. All right. Uh, number eight now. Uh, the teacher pointed it, point uh, the mistake out to him. The teacher po uh, pointed out the mistake to him. I so, think both are correct. I think so too. Uh, the teacher pointed the mistake out to him. The teacher pointed out the mistake. Pointed out, but is it is it separable or inseparable? I can't remember. I think you're right, but uh, how did they use it? Out, point out. Uh, group two. Yeah, yeah, point this out. Yeah, you're right. You're right, guys. Yeah, so it's a noun, the mistake. So it can't. Uh, It's flexible. Yes, correct. Last one, Brian. Um, I knew Mark was going, uh, was wrong, but I didn't want to point it out. Mm -hmm. Can you do it the other way around? Can you say point out it? What do you think? Uh, Shreya, this. Point. Uh. What does the rule say? When you're using yeah, the pronoun. Fair. Yeah. Check this rule, Brian. What? Huh? The one in, in the red box here. Yeah, man, I uh, point it up. Point it yeah. out. Cause... Yeah. And what about point out it? Can you do that? Magic. It's not yes. true. Yeah. No. Yeah. Correct. All right. So. This was an exercise about the grammar of phrasal verbs, where to put them, how to, how to make them. That's the idea. All right, so this one is kind of obvious, kind of clear. Mm, okay, let's check. the phrasal verb that come across with. Come across with? Come across with. Came, came across as. I know came across as. Uh, came across oh. as it's like a first impression. He came across as strange. I'm not sure. Let me confirm this with Uncle Google. Uh, now, came across as 
uh, that's your, it means you're you're explaining your first impression or your perception yeah. of this person. That's strange. Okay, no need to wait on locking up. No, because now I'm I'm curious. You started it. <laughs> I want to check. Yeah. Came across. Came across as. Let's very quickly check it. Uh, to be viewed by others, to have one's personality, behavior, intentions. Um, I think I was sort of close, not exactly. Uh, to come across to meet someone, to find something by change. Not the afternoon came across. Uh, yeah, but but check it later, please. Uh, uh, no. Yeah. Come across as. Yeah. Uh, all right. Okay. So let's check. Let's check exercise seven. Let's go to number seven. All right. This looks like fun. Okay. So uh, number three. Yeah, this one's here. Yeah. Take your time. Okay. Here in exercise seven, we're going to do a little bit of listening. We have a little bit of uh, uh, some traditions. They're going to talk a little bit about. Uh, and here we can see some wedding traditions. Let's start with the box, the words in the box. Let's take a look. We have ancestors, proposed to someone, kidnap, a vein, a leap year. I think you know all of these words now, right? A leap year, not a proposed yeah. to someone. Yeah, I talked about the word, like he. Ancestor, not a kidnap, not a fall, like a vein, maralia, maybe I forgot it. Um, a vein, uh, this is... Maybe, yes, the... Uh, غرور. Ah, no, that's, that's a lot cool, a vein. I don't want to call it that. Yeah. Like this vein, like in the spelling of it. Ah, like a V-I. V-I-I. V-A-I-N. Yeah, vein. We're now going to have vanity. Yeah, vanity. Right, yeah. right, yes. Vein. Uh, غرور. Yeah, yeah. vein, غرور, or... غرور, okay, but okay. yeah, or... A vein is what a doctor uh, takes blood from. When you go have a blood test, the doctor ah. will take blood from your vein. Wait. The opposite. Ah, uh, sah, sah, wait. Shirian, shirian artery. Shirian artery. Artery, yes, yes. Wait, yeah. so, correct, correct. All right, so, uh, but let's start with the, with the question here. It says, look, uh, look at the photos. Which wedding traditions do you have in your country and what do you know about them? Hmm, let's check. So we have the best man, a wedding cake, the wedding cake, we have the honeymoon, we have wedding rings, we have confetti, and we have women proposing. Hmm, which of these do we have here in our culture in, in Libya, in Libyan weddings? Wedding cake. Okay. Yeah. Even confetti, I don't think they have it anymore. This was in the 90s, I think. Old weddings. <laughs> I remember my yeah. aunt <laughs> getting married in the 90s. I ate so much confetti, yeah. I got sick of it. And until today, I don't like it very much. Uh, sometimes they, 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 they serve it in uh, Fatha. Yeah, in Fatha, Fatha yes. with buklao and, uh, yeah. and the almond milk. They sometimes yeah. serve it. Sometimes. Yeah. Like a nostalgia, I think, but it's not a, a, it's not an official part anymore of wedding like it used to be. Yep. All right, yeah. all right. So yeah, I agree. These are, these are the things we have. We have the wedding cake, we have wedding rings. Confetti, let's say we're familiar with it at least, even if we don't have it anymore. Honeymoons, of course, yes. All Unfashionable right. anymore. Yeah, they're not fashionable. That's the word. That's the exact word. All right, what about the other things? What do we know about them? What do we know about the best man? thing and the women women proposing do, do you know do, do we do you know do you have any comments or any information on, about this um, maybe from the movies i think it's something related to uh western tradition or western yeah. tradition or uh, maybe christian something christian rather than maybe it could it could come from christianity yes yeah. 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 Because it's it's present in in the UK and in the USA, so it's not just an American thing. Mm. It seems to be a Western thing. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. And uh, women proposing. 
Are you familiar with this? Maybe in the future. <laughs> in the future, we will see this in Libya, maybe. Uh, but, uh, I, mean, I, would, I would support people this. Start, yeah, Definitely. people are starting to uh, follow the Western uh, uh, much more nowadays. But I think yeah. even, in the, even in the West, this is not very common, I think, right? It's not a common thing that a woman proposes. No, I'm sorry. Woman proposing, yeah, it's something weird. I think it's it's not real in the photo. Uh, yeah, of course. But in the, the photo, it's not real. I think it's not real. But it, it, it has happened around the world. Maybe not as common as we believe, but um, maybe it, it has happened. I don't know. Anyways, we'll, we'll, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll find out from the listening. So we're going to listen. Okay, Brahim, you missed the, the words. I don't know if you know all of them, but let me read some of these words because you'll see that you'll hear them in, in the listening. We have ancestors, proposed to someone, kidnap, a vein, a leap year. Any words that are new here? Ancestors. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Correct. Kidnap, yeah. Uh -huh. A vein. A vein is where doctors take your blood from. When you have a blood test, they'll take uh, blood from your vein. Uh, eh, eh, eh. Okay. A leap year. A leap year, a leap year, is, leap year. Uh, is the 20, 29th of February. Every four uh, years. Yeah, every four years there's a year which has 29th of February. I think it's it, it was last year, I think. Right? This year. No, this year left. So I left it. Can't fail leap year. I think. Can't be on. No, no. So now it's fair. So now it's complete. It's actually. Ah, okay. So this year is a leap year. So we won't have another leap year until 2024, I think. Yeah. Okay. Let's listen. Let's listen to the radio program. It will tell us about wedding traditions around the world. Let's find out. Today, I'm talking to Wendy Robinson, whose new book, I Do, is a history of wedding traditions. Hello. Wendy, first of all, we should start with the most obvious question. When did our ancestors start getting married to each other? Oh, weddings have been around since the beginning of civilization, but they haven't always been as peaceful as they are now. In parts of Europe around 2,000 years ago, if there weren't enough single women in the village, men often went and kidnapped a woman from another village. Really? Yes, and the man always took a close friend with him to help with the kidnapping, which is where the tradition of the best man comes from. That's interesting. That's also why the best man stands next to the groom during the wedding ceremony, so he could protect the bride if her family tried to come and take her back. Well, I'm pleased that things have moved on a bit since then. And what about wedding rings? Where did they originate? That tradition was started by the ancient Egyptians, and the wedding ring is always worn on the third finger of the left hand because the ancient Egyptians believed the vein of that finger was the vein of love and ran directly to the heart. Oh, right. And what about wedding cakes? Well, they've been around since ancient Greek and Roman times. The Greeks used to throw small cakes at the bride and groom, while the Romans used to break a cake over the bride's head. Both of these were symbols of fertility, you know, to help the bride have lots of children. Mm. And am I right in thinking that's why people throw confetti too? Yes, exactly. Guests used to throw wheat, rice or nuts coated in sugar over the happy couple to help them have children and also to wish for a successful harvest. Now, of course, people tend to throw confetti instead. OK, so then the happy couple go on their honeymoon. Where did that tradition originate? Well, one theory says this started in Babylonia about 4,000 years ago. After the wedding, the bride's father gave his new son-in-law all the mead, that's beer made from honey, the man could drink. This was drunk for the next month, and as the calendar was based on the moon, this period of time after the wedding became known as the honeymoon. And in the UK, women are traditionally allowed to propose to men on the 29th of February. Why is that? Ah, 
This dates back hundreds of years, when the leap year wasn't recognised by law. For this reason, women believed that they didn't have to follow the usual traditions, so they felt they could ask their men to marry them. And what about other traditions, such as... <laughs> Yeah, interesting. Yeah, really, really interesting. Ah. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah. All right. So um, let's see the question here. Let it, let it count. Okay. So it's just a quick discussion there. No, no specific questions. So the best man. Uh, no. What What did you get from the best man tradition here? Uh, the best man um, in uh, ancestor tal. Europe, Western. Yeah, European ancestors. Uh, they were, yeah, uh, the groom should uh, kidnap the bride mm -hmm. and uh, uh, he has to take his best friend with him uh, just in <laughs> case um, her family gonna prevent uh, the groom from taking the <laughs> bride to I'm protect her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so he help, helps with the kidnapping. He helps with the kidnapping. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Assist, yeah, assistant, kidnapping assistant. <laughs> yeah, and and what about uh, what about the wedding rings? What did they mention? Uh, wedding rings comes uh, from uh, ancient uh, Egyptian. Mm -hmm. Believe ancient that. Uh, yeah, believe that uh, there is a vein in the third uh, uh, finger, in the left hand, uh, runs to the heart directly. Mm -hmm. So, like um, uh, to express uh, the the love, the deep relationship, the intimacy, something yeah. like this. Yeah, true. Yeah. That's true. And the wedding cake, where where do they come from? Wedding cakes. Uh, Roman. From yeah. Ancient Roman. From the Roman, the ancient Romans and Greeks. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. they were throwing the piece of cakes on the uh, uh, bride and groom uh, to uh, for the fertility and uh, to having. Um, a big family or lots of children. Yeah. Right, right. And uh, that's related to confetti, right? Which, which people yeah. do now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They are throwing confetti instead of mm. piece of cakes. Okay, what about the honeymoon? Uh, the honeymoon came from Polonian. The, the, the Babylonians, Polonian, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Babylon, the Babylonians, yeah. Um, the yeah, the um, uh, father-in-law uh, mm -hmm. used to uh, give uh, the um, son-in-law, the groom, or, mm -hmm. uh, his son-in-law, uh, the um, something honey, honey in something, mm -hmm. and yeah, uh, they mentioned. Honey uh, mead. I don't know this word is maybe new. Mead. This is like honey wine. Mead. Ah, yeah, because yeah. she she mentioned something about drinking this uh, along the whole uh, month. Exactly. That's right, all over yeah. the uh, or along. Yeah, throughout the whole month. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, the last one, the last uh, tradition, the, the proposing women tradition. Uh, something related to the leap year uh, in, in uh, 29, uh, 29 uh, in February, uh, women can do something uh, unusual or something uh, they cannot do. In... Yeah, on regular days. Yeah, on regular days, yeah. All right. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. So these are. This is a quick introduction into some of the the, the, the origins of some of the wedding traditions around the world. Um, I think in our last, in our next lesson, we have a little bit of time. And uh, 
not so important, but we can start there to next lesson. Um, after that, okay. We have permission, asking, giving, and refusing permission. Mm. All right, so uh, so that's all for today. I'll see you on mm -hmm. Thursday. Okay, Naha, no, have a have a good day, uh -huh. and I'll see you okay. next session. You too. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye bye. Bye.